Audio testing. God, I sound like I got a sore throat. Cough, cough. Okay, I think we're good there. Video, and there goes the overlay. So hopefully this all looks good. Let me check to see if I'm streaming. I look like I'm streaming. Hello, and welcome to the stream. Uh, you will notice today that I do not have Emacs or Xclock running. And one reason for that is that I actually wanted to, um, I'm actually wanted to create a startup file. Uh, I'm changing the way I do startup on this machine. Uh, so it, when, oh, when it starts and I, and I connect to the uh, server, uh, what we have here is this file called startup after SSHFS. This fixes the time, which is not a very deep, uh, it just basically does an R date kills any existing Firefox and, and starts up Firefox and screen. Uh, but it doesn't start up Emacs and it doesn't start up uh, Xclock. But we will fix that. Um, well, actually, let's go ahead and do Emacs. Start up after SSHFS. Okay. And here, I think I'm just going to say Emacs, although I could... If I wanted to, I could say Emacs. Well, I'm going to now. Uh, Readme.stream, because that is the file that I usually bring up. At least that's the sort of top file that I bring up. Uh, now, the problem is I've actually forgotten how to get Xclock to... Um, and we don't need to do this right now, because we've already brought up uh, Emacs. Um, but we do need to bring up Xclock, and I've forgotten how I did this, but I think I actually have it written down. So... Also here we would start X clocking. Let's go ahead and just run this command straight. Oh dear. That does not appear to actually move X clock to the right place. So let's try this one more time. And I'm almost sure we can do minus geometry plus zero plus zero to put it to the top left. There we go. So let's get that in there. Okay, so that was just a very minor things we needed to do early on. At some point, we might want to look into saving the screen sessions somehow, um, which might not work because uh, the screen sessions are not saved in the home directory, which is mounted, but on the temporary directory, which actually is killed each time. Um, so today, what we're going to do is we were trying to figure out how um, to provide JavaScript with enough information to compute the position of the planets without really overloading it with something as heavy as the uh, ephemerides that are produced by NASA. And we thought that VSOP 2013 might be a solution, but it turns out not to be because it's pretty ugly also. So now we're going to do what we always want to do is um, the worst possible thing to do, which is, of course, roll our own solution. Um, now, we already have something called any dump take a look at real quick here. Um, BCAnyDump2.c, um, which will give you the, uh, the planet's position in, in various frames or even alt azimuth. Um, but what we actually want to know, the things that probably change less than anything else are the osculating elements. Um, and let's see if I ever mentioned them. Okay, this is interesting. Um, oh, this was when I was trying to find out what, how far away from a planet a given satellite could be when I wanted to do something with, um, with Jupiter. Um, but as it turns out, I never really pursued this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and create a... Um, um, we could just really make this a function, but we, we're going to surround it with something. Uh, let's call it BC. Is there an, oh shit! There's a BC oscillating PL. Let's get a quick look at this. Um, wow! 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 Not what we want, though. However, we can call it BC oscillating dot C, and we can do pretty much what we always do: copy from here and. Let's add the comment over here, actually. Determine the osculating elements 
for a given object um, from a given time, blah, 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 over a given time in a given reference frame. Um, to an other object, that honestly, the other object will almost always be the sun. Uh, unless we're talking about, uh, well, I guess it could also be a, uh, for the Earth, it would be, the, you know, for the Moon, it would be the Earth, blah, blah, blah. But let's just see what we have here. Um, you know, we need this, of course. Uh, we're actually going to try to create the func. well, okay. We'll, we'll to do make this a function, because we really want this as a function. Um, you know what, actually, let's go ahead and make it a function. Um, and we're going to have here, because... It's going to return an array, so we can't really do anything about that. Um, now, really, there's a... Um, there is... There's already an existing thing called OSC element. Um, we're just going to wrap around it, basically. So we'll say tin wrapper around... Or this wrapper. Around osculating element C. Um, and what it's going to take here is, um, let's just see how we're going to do this. Uh, and I've done this a lot of times, so let's go ahead and look at bclib.h for an example. I think it's going to be like observer, well, okay. Uh, I'm trying to find what it is when I send it as, it's just OBS. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, spice int observer, the thing that's doing the observer. We could call this the center also, um, because it's going to be the, the center of the orbit. Um, let's call it that, and then we of course want the um, body that is orbiting, and let's go ahead and um, see if I can actually document this correctly for once. Hidden wrapper around us here that computes osculating, which is different from oscillating, elements given, and do I actually do this with like, do, am I, there we go, uh, center, um, the center body of the orbit, the body being orbited, I should say, ob should be consistent, nah, I'll say object. Um, the, um, object that is orbiting, obviously these do vary with time, so we'll say spice double ET, the ephemeris time. Um, and the other thing is we need a frame. The far, the frame for which to compute the parameters. And that is going to be a, um, a, a string. Okay. Not terribly hard here. Um, so oscillate will obviously be our, uh, our big, uh, our big uh, thing we're going to rely on for the most part. And let's see if we can once again F up my parameters. Good, 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 good. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the list of spice functions. I'm going to go ahead and close off all these other um, tabs uh, because it's ugly. And okay. All right. Determine conic. They're not, they're not elliptical because it could, in theory, be conic. Uh, so what it needs is the... Um, position and velocity uh, of an object with respect to another object in a given frame. That's pretty standard. So let's go ahead and do that. And I think that is SPK easy, uh, easy reader, but I get the feeling this is, might not be the right one because we need uh, target reference frame. Oh yeah, this is fine. Um, so... 
And this should give us the velocity is why, why we kind of need it like this. Okay. So we are going to need um, constant aberration correction observation. The output is going to be s targ and, and lt. So it's going to be spice double, and we'll just call it by these names, s targ lt. Um, it's going to be spicky z c. Target will be the body. Et is as given. Um, the the ref, I think ref is the reference frame, but let me check real quick. Reference frame of the output state vector. So we'll just say that's just what we give it. Um, aberration correction. I mean, with machines this fast, we almost always want to say cn plus s, um, which is which is which is what we want because we're. Actually, I don't even know if it matters for oscill oscillating elements. Um, actually, probably, really, I won't say that it doesn't. I'll, it might. Okay. Um, the observer, which is, of course, the center. Um, okay. And that's that's the uh, that doesn't give us the oscillating elements. This gives us the uh, position and velocity. Now... We can get the oscillating elements, and we are doing it like this. And else, there's eight of them, and we can we can kind of figure out what they are in just a sec. So here we're gonna need um, uh, we're gonna need uh, no 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 we're gonna need uh, eight error vector. Um, I think mu is an input to this, not an output, so we don't need to worry about that. Oh yeah, gravitational parameter. The that could be a little bit of a stickler there, uh, but that's okay. We'll get we'll get it. Okay, um, so this is going to be the only thing we need to do is define mu. So the OCLT of s targ, which is our state, et. I'll put little stars around to remind us we don't have it yet. Mu, and then of course else, which is what we're going to return actually. Um, no, we're not. Uh, because, uh, shit, no, we actually have to do it like this, and you have to send in, um, a pointer to an array, like we do with pretty much anything that, uh, is going to return a value in, oh no, actually, um, spice double, um, which we're going to send in as a pointer, maybe? Uh, shit. Because else is going to be the thing that gets set, basically, to the to the answer. Let me quickly see how what I'm doing here. Yeah, I guess when the, we, do, we do send it in as a... Um, as what appears to be an eight-element array, and it gets filled in, so we don't actually need to... Um, you don't actually need to, to redeclare it here. Okay, get GM of center body, and this is okay too because we've actually done this in the other one as well. It's pretty much just cut and paste at this point, uh, and it's I think we used BODVCD. Um, planet mass parameter is actually gravitational mass parameter. I mistyped it there. I mean, didn't mistype it, but mu of body VCD. Center, gravitational mass parameter, dimensions, mu because it's an array, and here's weird because I think it's going to actually require uh, the gravitational mass parameter as a double, not as a uh, as an array. Yeah. So this is just some weirdness that they give it as um, as an array. I think that's just because the way BODVCD works, you, they have to give it as an array. So. And this fills it in, so we actually don't need to. Do, we don't even need to say return here, uh, because it's going to get filled in for us. Chances that this actually compiles—if it doesn't do anything—but the chances that it compiles are fairly low. Uh, here we go. Ref. Um, yep, that should be frame. I'm fairly impressed that that actually compiled and worked. Okay, um, so 
So let, over here, let's go ahead and declare answer, which is going to be the thing that we get. And then we're just going to call oscillating elements. Um, why do I want to make this difficult on myself? Let's actually say the, the sun is the center body. The earth is the body that's orbiting. The ephemeris time is the beginning of uh, 2000. The frame is J2000. Uh, Pomodoro time, but it's the first one, so we're going to skip it. Um, and we send an answer, which is an array, so it actually gets filled in correctly. And then... Less than 8. I, this is just being lazy. Um... Alt percent F. So the ith element is uh, answer by. Again, if this works, I'll be seriously impressed with myself. Uh, by the way, uh, we probably need to write down what these elements actually are, and I think I do that here. Uh, we we don't really need to. Oh, shiny. Um. Okay, so I, I've got it here, but it, it doesn't actually say what it is. Uh, let's see. Semi, okay. Just put it in the comments here. And OTC else will tell us what it's actually trying to return. And booyah. Some of the stuff we don't even really need. Um, Honestly, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, that's what I was trying to do with this. Yeah, okay. This is just so I can print out the same abbreviations as NASA is using. Um, so we can say, instead of saying this, we can say um, this, where this is stirs of, of I. Okay, if this compiles, I'll be surprised. Mother, f okay, good. Implicit declaration of function oscillating elements. Really? Unless... Oh. Yeah. This is one of those weird things about C. I think you have to declare functions before you use them, or at least declare their headers. I'm not doing either one, which is bad. Uh, but this should fix that. Damn. I mean... Now, I don't know what these values actually mean, so... Yep. Always useful to load... Um, tempted to put into bclibh, but we need, obviously need to load some sort of uh, a kernel file. And I will use my standard one, uh, which is in literally all of these files. Sorry, almost literally in all of these files. And it's called standard, because... <laughs> Because that's, that's the only name I can think of for it. All right, let's try this again. Dun, 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 dun. That took longer than it should have. Okay. The perifocal distance of Earth is, at that time was 147 million kilometers, I'll believe it. Eccentricity of the Earth's orbit... Hmm, I don't believe that one. And I think these are equatorial coordinates, so that might actually be correct. Um, uh, eccentricity seems a little bit high. Um, inclination, longitude of the ascending node. Longitude of the ascending node. That would be the December equinox. So this is actually really close to being correct. Um, the argument of the periapsis would be these look kind of weird because these are in degrees and let's see what is mean m0 mean anomaly at the so it's almost finished in orbit that's not cool uh the epoch and the gravitational parameter so let's do this for these four values these are actually going to be in um in radians so, just for printing purposes, um, uh, I'd 
really don't want to change the answer, but uh, let's do this. Uh, so these are going to be, let's see. So zero we want to print it as is, one we want to print it two, three, four, five we want multiplied. So we're going to say if I think I messed that up because I didn't bother to check. One more time. Zero, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I think I can declare this outside. And mult is just for, uh, d you know, just, just to look at it. Just for display purposes. So we normally don't change it, but if one of these. Um, let's see, these are in, so it's going to be 180 over pi c. Uh, times mult. This works, I am going to bc get it. I made this exceptionally quickly. Uh, well, it, it compiled, and if it works, well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and save it anyway. Um, off to get it goes. 1, 2, 3, 7, gone. Okay, that's fine, eccentricity. Yeah, this is in, because it's an ecliptic coordinate, it's in J2, I did, I did say J2000, didn't I? I must have done. Yeah. The, the tilt of the Earth with respect to the Earth's equator is right around there. Ascending longitude node. I need to figure out what the hell that means. Um... Also, this mean anomaly. Um, well, I guess it's yeah. It is actually very close to the perihelion, so this is actually okay. T zero somehow went to what the hell is T zero supposed to be? Oh, the epoch, which is zero because that's how we set it. Um, and the gravitational mass parameter is I don't know what the hell it means, but it's not important. Okay, so now. Um, I'm actually kind of curious. What is the eccentricity of Earth's orbit? And that that does seem to jibe with. Uh, that's a little bit higher than expected. But okay. Um. So this is. These are the Earth's parameters. at a given point in time. Now, let's go ahead and get the, because what we really want are the ecliptic coordinates. We don't, we don't care about the, um, um, I think that's what that is. Let me check. Yeah, Eclipse J2000 is fine. Obviously, we're not going to do it one at a time. Okay, that was really quick. And there we go. The inclination, of course, would be very small there. Um, these numbers almost will make no sense for the Earth. Uh, because the, the Earth is so close to being right on the ecliptic, the longitude of the ascending node, these numbers are going to change greatly if we were to, if we were to put them in. Um, so what I want to do is I want to get these numbers for, let's see, can I pull that old trick of where I don't print a new line until the whole row is printed? And then, um, I can change this. I can actually put this into a loop. Um, let's see if this works, though. Yeah, this is a little bit wordy here, but I think we can handle it. Um, actually, let's see. Uh, T0, I'm pretty sure, is just what I put in there, so it's not that exciting. Okay. Eccentricity, inclination. Yeah, let's go ahead and put this into, um, trying to see if there's parameters we can check against. 
let's say we'll put these on Mars. Yeah, let's see what this happens when we do this to Mars. And actually, I'm not crazy about what I just did, so let's undo that. We might print fewer values, but I do want them separated by a new line for now. Uh, make and then BC, because now I'm getting a little bit lazy. Um, that should not be the case. Um, let me try that one more time. I, I, there's something obviously wrong here if that continues to fail. Unless I really fuck something up. Okay, that's that's weird. Alright, but let, let, let's see if the results are correct at least. Um, now somewhere we have orbital parameters um, it was like T1 something, I don't know if they're going to still be here though. Somewhere we have, uh, well, let's just call it. There we go. And this is only has to be approximate. So for Mars, um, okay, astro uh, the eccentricity is 0 0.09. We're getting the eccentricity of point. Oh, that's not good. That's way off. Um, inclination 1.85. Oh, sorry, this is Jupiter. <laughs> Oopsie. 0 0.0048, that's pretty reasonable. Inclination 1.3, yeah, it could do okay. Longitude of the ascending node, 100, we say 100 point, yeah, it's, it's okay. Um, omega, what the hell is omega? Is that M0? I think it might be. And then something is 34 degrees, and I probably don't know what that is. Do I care? Do I need it? Um, okay. So now the question is going to be, um, how is that going to compare, um, to the way this looks like a year from now? And the, the idea is these things don't change very much except for maybe the, um, um, the actual current longitude. What the hell is that though? Mean anomaly at the epoch. That's the thing that's going to change. The problem here is I'm going to have to bring in a new... Because I don't want to overwrite what I just did. And good. Okay, so now I can just do... Okay. And the idea here is these numbers aren't going to change, except for the mean anomaly, which, which you know, whips around. Um... And that's the epoch. That's fine. Um, you, so this is this is the idea: is that these numbers don't change too much, and much in the way that they have uh, approximated them in um, in VSOP 2013. We can use a another approximation that's accurate for a given amount of time. Um, but has fewer terms. In other words, we can do a better job of approximating this. Um, so in order to do that, I, I'm going to go ahead and save this to, to get real quick. Um, okay, all saved. Um, so what we need to do is basically look at, these numbers are going to be very, very consistent, uh, again, except for this one. Um, Yeah, I'm actually surprised. 
but oscillating elements doesn't give us the period, which would be much more stable uh, than the mean anomaly. But, okay. Uh, Okay. Oh, and by the way, one thing that they're recommending here is you feed what you get from here back into the reverse function to see if you get back something close to what you had before. Um, I get the feeling this doesn't really, this just subtracts vectors, never mind. Uh, let's see. Okay. So the goal here is to get, um, so we have this lovely function. Now we can, um, let's see. I, for Earth, these are not going to be very exciting. Mercury has the highest eccentricity. Um, but on boards, I'm going to use Venus. Uh, so what we're going to do here is, because we already have I inside, double J equals zero, J less than, um, I think we actually have a function that will do this for us in vclib.h. So this is going to be um, year to ET. <laughs> there you go. Year to ET, 2010. Hello, 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 hello. How are you doing, Mr. Oxusful? Um, crap. I totally forgot what I wanted to tell you. But anyway, good to see you. Hello, how's it going? Talk to me. Speak unto me. Uh, be at one. Okay, so we're going to do this for 20, 10 years surrounding uh, us right now. Okay, great. Fire away. We can try to work on one of them if you want to. Um... This is probably not a great idea, but let's see what happens. Okay, let's see what this does. All right, so what we want to do here is like, let's say grep RP so we can see the change in that value, which isn't much by the way. And if we wanted to, we could try to come up with a function um, well, we could plot this for one thing. In fact, I'm kind of tempted to pl plot this now. In fact, I'm going to plot this now. Excuse me. Oh, uh, and I've got a little shortcut here. If I put something in the file call, let's see. Wow, two things I don't really know that much about. Signals I could kind of help you with. Threading I do not know much about. Signals is basically when you send, um, and even in C, I, I don't have to do them in Perl, not in C. Is there anything else you need help with that I could be maybe of more help with than, uh, if we could try learning this together, uh, which I'm happy to do. Uh, but honestly, um, I we didn't really work with threads back in the day because we only had single processors the concept of doing um, having multiple CPUs wasn't really a thing back then. Everything was pretty linear. Uh, signal handling is important. Um, I never learned it in C, but in Perl I know how to do it. It basically means when you send the program a, a signal from the operating system, 
uh, and uh, it's a signal. Mo you can handle programs can handle most signals except kill minus nine, which kills them regardless. But for every other symbol, you can respond to the every other signal rather. Uh, you can respond to the signal uh, and say, you know, hey, this has happened. Um, and I think I even I've, unfortunately it's all Perl. Everything I've done in this is Perl. Okay, so let's do this and let's take a look. So you can see here that. Um, Give me one second to grab a beverage, but I will not take the full Pomodoro. I'm just going to grab a beverage and be right back. Okay, we are back. So please, let's see, hang on one second here. Okay, that's that's not too, that one we can do. Um, it's a shell file in a working directory. That's not hard. Um, okay, let's do that. Um, how do you want to do this, Adam? Or I think you liked Adam, right? You were the Adam guy? So the Adam guy. Uh, or VS Code, I see Replit might have an issue with this because um, they really don't want you to, I'm almost sure they've disabled exec because that could do really terrible things for their system. Um, which I would like, but they would probably not be with. Um, right. Right. Um, what I'm saying though is Right, so what tool do you want to use to collaborate? Uh, Replit was what I would normally suggest, but I think even in C, they won't allow the command exec. Um, I mean, they're pretty stupid, but they're not that stupid, I don't think. Um, because exec lets you run anything on the operating system. Um, and that would not be a good thing to let people do. Uh, exec CV and exec CP are the two, are the two types of. Um, yeah, these these all execute a file. Oh, exec L is a new one on me. I know of exec V and exec P. Um, yeah, this is easy. This is all easy stuff. But how do you want? How do you want to collaborate on it? How do you want to write the code together? We could try Replit. They might allow it. Um, I mean, that would be insanely stupid of them, but I mean, you don't know. Maybe they are stupid. Because basically, exec lets you run any program on the operating system. And REPL probably doesn't want people running arbitrary programs uh, in their, even in a sandbox. So that's why they probably have disabled the exec family of function. <laughs> oh, that's a little bit cheating. Um, no, I, I would want to work with you on this. I'd want you to see what your ideas were. Um, I could guide you along the path. Uh, I don't want to really do it for you, though. I, mean, I probably could. Um, um, so you tell me. How, how did we collaborate last time? I thought we used Adam to collaborate. Uh, but am I, I might be wrong. That might have been somebody else. VS Code, so maybe... Um, REPL, okay, so do you not want my help then, or what you saying there? Am 
want to help you, but I can't. I can't do it for you. I mean, I could, but I'm not going to. Because there, there is, an, there's an issue there. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out what the the deviation here is. All right. Um, like I said, I can help you with it. Or if there's something else you want to do, um, or if you want to play around with signals, I'm up to that too. But we need to find a way to collaborate. No matter how we do any of this stuff, we need to do it together, and we probably could be using a shared code space. Um, um, okay. Okay, that's not as great for, for you or me or the lack of viewers that we have. But okay, that's cool. I will keep an eye on chat then. Um... And then I will also be disappointed at the fact that something I've taught remained relatively, um, relatively constant, like the perifocal distance, changes. And I guess while we're at it, we might as well fuck with the eccentricity, too. There might be, like, literally no way of doing this. So the eccentricity... Yeah, and the, the really stupid thing is it jumps around in not really a great uniform way. It would be very hard to kind of describe this pattern using signs and... I mean, obviously, they've done it um, in VSOP, but... Um, but it's clearly non-trivial. Um, I get, this is Mercury, so I mean it might be a little bit, you know, not as bad for other uh, planets which have a slower, uh, smaller. Basically, they're better in every way. So how about Mercury's inclination? Does that change a lot? It probably does now that I, because I now I'm giving up on this. That's actually fairly small changes in Mercury's inclination. Um. Just now, Neptune I knew know would have a problem uh, because a Neptune has a very uh, small eccentricity, which actually affects the other parameters quite a bit as well. Uh, let's see how how constant is the longitude of the ascending node. I this is that one. You could almost you could actually sort of close to being a linear uh, declination. And now M0 is going to change. M0 is going to be very linear. That That is expected. Because that is the, uh, that is the mean. That's basically going to be almost a perfect line. Yeah. W with drops, obviously. Uh, because this is, um, this is the thing that increases uniformly with the period. As, as Mercury orbits. This is n not even the true anomaly, which, which increases in a different way. So we are in pretty sucky shape right now. Um, let's see. Um, so let's look at... Um, So apparently VSOP, let's take a quick look at something here. Because um, apparently the newer version of VSOP, the one that I kind of want to use, uh, does not have X, Y, and Z coordinates. I mean, it does have ephemerides, um, but those are way too big to use. Oh, right, right, okay, sorry. Um, okay, that might be the thing I need. Let me quickly go, though, to VSOP. Um, let's see if this has an XYZ in it. Um, uh, 
less. Okay. So this is variable A, and I think we looked at these, and these are not the X, Y, and Z variables, but I think I know where we're going with this now. Okay. I think I've nailed this. Um. Oh. This does not apparently have subdirectories. So let's see what the XYZ is here. Maybe it's what we need. Uh, planet 5, variable 1. This is going to be the X variable for Jupiter. Uh, but we don't know what the actual um, frame reference is here. Yeah, this is going to suck balls. Um... which kind of makes me want to go back to the idea of using an API um, to, to compute these things uh, remotely. But let's see. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure this is only for the outer planets. It doesn't even include uh, Pluto, which is technically not a planet anymore. But still. Okay. Oh, here we go. I'm going to use get current working directory and create for the first part. That sounds like a... Is it create or is it open? It might be create. Um... I thought you could use open to create, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, so create's probably fine. Um, I didn't actually know that. Um, I should, but I didn't. Let's quickly Google that. See, create file using open. I'm almost sure you can do that. Yeah, here we go. You do not really need create. Let's see. Oh, whoa, whoa. That doesn't actually create the files. And also... Okay, this does not create the files. Let's see what this does. Okay. Yeah. So you actually can use... Um, you can use open to create files. It, you don't have to use C-R-E-T-A-T. -E um, and you can, but... Um, I mean, I'm kind of curious now. Why use create instead of open? Um, nope, I actually want to know this one. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, so the question is, why do we need create if open does all the work? Because I've always done that. Um, well, there you go. Create is equivalent to open. So, you don't ever need create. And I didn't think you did either. I, I was pretty sure you could um, you could use open all the time. But create's cool. Go ahead and use it. Now we'll go back to worrying about um, my miserable fucking life. Um, oh yeah, how to get accurate planet positions. Oh yeah, we were we were here. Okay, hang on. Um, wait. No, no, I wanted to go over here. Um. Great. Uh, so apparently. Uh, 
they do have Chebyshev coefficients, which are going to be way too long. Um, they have very large lists of, I guess that's the thing we have to do now. Um, I'm actually kind of curious to see what these other files are here. Control file. Oh, these are just ways of testing to make sure we got all the uh, the um, the variables correctly. Okay. So I guess we're gonna go from here. At some point, you gotta ask. Uh, how how small do these numbers have to be before you stop caring? But all right. Um, so let's do this. Um, Vsop to maxima. Um, this should do something. By which I mean nothing. Okay. I mean this is this is a file that has the right. Um, format to it. So let's let's take a look here. Let's go back over here to uh, Vsop to Maxima. Can I do session save here? I should be able to, but I can't. Okay. Um, blah 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 blah. If variable space number of digits. Space bunch of spaces, uh, then there should be a, a multiply sign T, star star, bunch of digits, um, okay, so this should be getting hit, um, I mean the only kind of weirdness here is, uh, all has a, um, I will have a, uh, a new line at the end of it. That shouldn't be much of a problem, though. Okay, let's just do this. If this doesn't happen, we know something is wrong. Okay, that's not what I meant to happen, but um, let's actually look for the word found now. Okay, so something is wrong here. Let's go ahead and get rid of this line. Uh, okay, let's make sure we have this uh, correct here. Okay, so it is variable any number of spaces. Um, Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, that's interesting. Because usually the variable is a number. But for, I guess, for some of these things, it is not a number. Um, variable. In fact, none of these is a number. So where did the numbers come in? I'm going to guess that's, um, well, it might be secular, but that's, no. Um, that might be in the XYZ files. Yeah. Because X, Y, Z are three variables, and then they give you, like, one, two, three. Okay, that's not a huge deal. Um, so here we're just going to say um, non-space characters. And I think that's going to be it, actually. That'll fix the whole thing. Or it won't. 
Okay. Um, bunch of spaces. Okay. Then we're looking for the star T star star. Is there um, Pomodoro time? I'm going to be back in two and two. Okay, we are almost back. And uh, we're still almost back. All right, we're back. Okay. So let's see what we're doing wrong here. The variable space, any number of non-spaces, any number of spaces. This dot star kind of bugs me. Star T, star star, bunch of digits. Obviously, one way to do this and get really sick to death of the whole thing is you just basically first see if you can match um, something smaller. So let's do that. There we go. Um, Okay, that's fine. A bunch of spaces followed by anything which is possibly nothing, followed by star and a T. So far, so good. Oh, shit. They've changed this to be just one star now. Really? Okay. Um, that's kind of annoying. Have they changed the whole format of this then? Or, let me, let me. I was using different, I was using the, um, the XYZ file, so maybe, uh, let's see, yeah, well, they did do it this way, oh, but they have a different format here, these are these variables, and then they say times t to the zeroth power, times t to the first power, and so on. So I guess they changed that format, though it's really kind of annoying. Yeah. All right. 
just a little bit, makes my life just a little bit worse. Um, let's see. That doesn't even make sense, though. would we want I'm double checking here that the um, t times one actually does mean to the power of um, of one. Un See, that's a power of for sure there. Um, now, in the other, actually, I think even over here, I do have a mention of how to read uh, VSOP 87. Um, hopefully, it's still there. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, I made the create sh file and write small script into it using C part. Now, I will do the last one. Okay. Good deal. Okay, rectangular. Yeah, this is actually really useful. Um Now this is the the whole idea is you add up a bunch of cosines. The question though is oh, here we go. Now let's see you explain. I doubt this is going to work. Yeah. Let's see if this guy explains VSOP 2013 anywhere. All right. Because clearly they've changed some stuff here. Um. This might be me. Oh. This better not be me. This looks like me. Okay, good. It's not me. Okay. Okay. Now the Chebyshev coordinates I do know how to use. Okay. Okay, so we might be able to use uh no, these are the wrong these are the Chebyshev coordinates. Uh and they're they're discontinuous is one of the problems that they have. Um, yeah, and the problem is you can't get analytic series for the uh, DE ephemerides because they do interpolation. So, all right, let's just go ahead and assume that the, you know, and we'll see if it's wrong, um, that you have a star followed by T followed by a star, followed potentially by another star, but not necessarily. Okay. Also, I need to fix how we, this damn thing thinks about tabs. Not consistent. Okay. This actually might work. Let's see what happens. Uh, 
Okay. Should print something out. Okay, not quite there, but it, we do get to this point. Um, let's see. And this this we'll need to fix, but uh, let's see. Fields equals split. So this happens. Oh, there is a var zero, definitely. Um. Oh. Oh. There's no. Okay. Okay. So it's wrong. Um, so let's see, the problem here is now, uh, I'm looking for vars as numbers, and let's see, what do I use var now? Okay. And this will not fly because var no is no longer a number. That matter neither is but coef is a number, but now I'm almost sure this isn't gonna work because there's a you can't really mix hashes and um, arrays like this. I mean it should be fixable, but this isn't this isn't gonna work the way I want it to work. It's a little bit annoying actually. Alright. I really have to see what the hell this is now. Um, it might be, it might work just perfectly. That just will annoy me for some reason. Actually, I need to debug here. All right, let's see what this looks like. Blah, 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 coefs are empty. Okay, so that's not cool. So we have coefs. What is coefs? What do I have it set to? Um, So I do not want it, I want it to be a hash. That shouldn't have actually had an effect though. Okay. So the question is, what the hell is this line doing? Co-F's, Varno co-F, um, oh, I'm sorry. Unfolding wrong? Ooh, your mama. Unfold. Oh, I need another parentheses there. I'm going to be freaking impressed if this actually works. No, I, it works. This is not groovy. These are actually much bigger numbers that happen to have um, that apparently they've decided <coughs> apparently they have decided to split out the mantissa. So this is no longer connected to this. This would be E minus 06. Okay. Um, so I'm really quite, quite unhappy about this. Because they do not have X, Y, Z. Well, actually, maybe do they? Maybe I just didn't download it correctly. Um, because they definitely did for um for the eighty-seven ones, but let's see. Okay. So we're looking for something like VSOP two zero one three A dot G. Who knows, we might find it. Yep. What 
that is a search. Okay. Okay. Oh wait, not www moron. Just this. <sighs> All right. That might have been a PDF. This is hopefully not a PDF. Okay. Actually, let me go back to um, where I found these suckers. Which is one nice thing about wget m It does, it does let you keep where you were. Um, so. It does remember where you got things from by because it names the directories like that. Oh. Boy, you should never really look outside that pub directory, should you? Um. Maybe you shouldn't have even looked outside of that. All right, let's see what the hell where the hell we are. Um, is it CDR or oh, um, actually no, I want the uh, newer one, uh, which is um, okay, come on, this guy here. Maybe I just missed it. Incoming outgoing pub. FM. Databases. So where the hell did I find this sucker? FM Planets. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open that in a separate window because I'm wondering if some of this other stuff is good. Asteroids, comets, eclipses, moon, planets, reference frames, satellites, and the sun. Let's take a look at planets. Oh, wow. Maybe I should read this. Um, oh, they actually have, hmm, well, this looks really good. Okay, so apparently I actually uh, downloaded one level too low, I think. Um, so let me, huh, oh, I only downloaded two things from there, so maybe I need to download the whole thing. I think I actually made a note to myself about that, uh, but note or no note, that is not a bad thing to do. Uh, so let me go ahead and copy this address to where I can get to it on the other machine, which is to say in README Stream. Or anywhere, actually. Okay. And now... And this will slow down the streaming a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be that much, because this is actually a fairly small amount of data, I hope. Okay. And it's off. Uh, again, we're probably going to get too much data this time, uh, but that's okay, because I don't care. And hopefully we'll get things that we can use. Although even then, it's a, um, it's a lot of data. Um, to put into a JavaScript file. Okay, so now we're going to try, um, uh, now we're going to Pomodoro, back in two and two.
almost back. And we're back. Okay, so while that data comes down, which by the way, it actually is coming down right here. Um, the geocentric, whew, it's not bad. Um, unfortunately, I'm guessing these files will be very, that's not too bad either actually. Hmm. Okay. It's good shit here. Unfortunately. I mean, I guess you could interpolate between the given times, but that's... Oh, this is actually once a day. Um... which is interesting. Huh. Uh, and that's what we did for the sun, we using uh, interpolations. Um, the question is, how big can you make the interpolation without uh, getting too far away from the actual data? So this might just be a test of, this is, this is actually good information here. Um, <coughs> But I don't think you can draw straight lines through the data and and get what you want. Uh, although if you could, uh, you could store this information very compactly. Um, so, yeah. And Mercury, I think, Uh, is going to jump around way too much for this to be accurate, I think. Um, but yeah, this is sort of the other, the backup plan here was uh, we could use right ascension and declination, which is what we actually want, by the way, ultimately, um, and store that using interpolation. So that that's what we did for the sun. So could do that here. The question is... Um, and that would actually be the fastest way of doing it, too. Instead of having to go through a lot of um, calculations like elliptical coordinate or conic coordinate calculations, we would just basically read this off. So now, um, sort of F me here, um, because I don't think any of these things give right as well, that's not true. All right, what Okay. BC. Dump. I think this gives X, Y, and Z, though. It doesn't give, um, doesn't give right ascension and declination. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, it does. Have I just gone in a really large circle for no good reason? All right, fantastic, all by yourself. My stream in the background, that's that's how it should be. Um, so the problem with this one is it doesn't actually give me, um, it doesn't give me a choice of delta. So BC any dump is probably the way we, we probably need to improve that even more. Oh, I guess BC any dump too. And you dump two, okay. And this currently is including a bunch of crap, but the crap that's being included, let me just see what the crap is being included here real quick. Um, ooh, well, I'm glad you got over them, hopefully. Segmentation faults are okay. I mean, that just means you ran out of memory or you didn't allocate memory correctly. Um, okay. Okay.
Okay, so this just basically gives us um, uh, let's see, this gives us well, we're going to have to run it to see what it gives us. Uh, J2000, Eclipse J2000. Okay, so it does give us... Um, oh, no. These actually are... Ecliptic Latitude and Longitude. Um, so, yeah, that's what I need, actually. Um... So I guess the next question is, um, can Maxima take in data in this form and do interpolations on it, which I think we kind of have now gone full circle on. Uh, um, Okay, so let's do this. And this is the moon, so I don't think I want, want to quite do that. So let's see. Um, so we'll use this as the start date. And this is the end date. Um... Let's go ahead and do every hour, and let me make sure what the uh, freaking output looks like again, what the input looks like. Uh, start, end, delta. Oh, that's the moon, yeah. So you can't really look at the Earth from the Earth. Doesn't work. Mars. Actually, let's use, nah, let's use Mars. It, it's sort of the closest one, I think. Uh, no, it is actually, no, no, this is, uh, this clock here is, uh, universal coordinated time, uh, just so everyone can ha share a time zone. It's only 6.09 p.m. for me. I am in the mountain, t uh, mountain daylight time zone. So, no, and by the way, this is, I think this is 12 a.m., technically, 12.09 a.m., uh, nine minutes past midnight. Okay, ooh. Oops, any dump two. The adventure continues. Okay. And so, what I really want here is um, the second one, which is, okay, so this is F1, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And for right now, I will leave it as uh, spaces. Might change my mind on that one. Yeah, we're just doing some testing here. Um, I'm going to call this BC interpolate.mec because that's what we're doing. And we're going to just because we want to do. Um, The only formulas we're going to use right now are these. Um, in test form this time, I'm confused. Aren't all exams in test form? I mean, to me, exam and test mean the same thing. Or do you mean in this case, you won't, it won't be open book. You have to actually take it under timed, proctored conditions.
Let's see how big this sucker is. Um, I'm, I intentionally chose a fair... That's not that big, actually, but... Okay, temp interpolate dot text, which is really a terrible thing to... You know what? I'm actually going to put it inside of um, a directory of the day, just, so, just in case we ever need it again. Yeah, I don't really need the... I don't need the... Uh, Oh, okay, okay, this, oh, I see, it'll be in test form as opposed to write code. This will actually be, like, um, multiple choice questions, maybe, or uh, short, short answer questions, instead of having to write code. Well, that, that should probably be helpful. Okay. I must have a read matrix function in bclib.max. I can't imagine for one second that that's built in. Okay. All right, let's see what this does. Got it, got it. Cool, that, that should be easier. Uh, you know, I get the feeling the very first row is the one that's giving it trouble. Because that is the header row, which I actually need to get rid of at some point. Because it's not even correct anymore. Okay, let's pretend that makes sense. Let's try that again. Oh yeah, there we go. Pro probably probably should have put a dollar sign after that. <laughs> oh, a little, a little bit sharp there. A little bit sharp there. Not incorrect, but sharp. Okay. Oh, so this worked out really nicely. We have. Um, okay, that's nice. Um, this never actually works, but if I were to transpose this, um, and look at the second element, it should just be. Um, the right ascensions. Oh, actually, that's not going to work. It's going to be this. Oh, wow, that actually worked. I'm impressed. Okay. Oh, that was interesting. Um, now, can I list plot this? Why is it being weird now? It's really, really unhappy with me. But only in this one window. Because I think I defined a list plot somewhere. Okay, we're going to have to kill it from over here. That was kind of weird. Alright, we're going to have to really kill it. Okay, what's why is it doing this? 
Alright, well we can kill this. Um, hopefully our maximum is not running anymore. Okay, good. So let's try that one more time. <sighs> okay. Lock. And this time I'm going to get smart and not have it spit out everything when I read it. Um, hopefully that weirdness won't happen again. Okay. Alright, there we go. And... Kinda curious. I'm pretty sure I had a plot function that I created here. Yeah, list plot. Uh, maybe just got unhappy because it's such a big... Uh, no, 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 no. So we'll do this. We want the... Um, the right ascension. And this. And... I think I got the wrong thing, though. This is not the right ascension. This is the time. So I probably meant this. Yeah. Uh, and this is retrograde motion right there. That of a NAS, as you can see. Um, I'm missing my widgets, so I need to get my widgets working in here, but anyway. Um, there should be little widgets here that let me go back and forth in, um, in terms of scaling. Um, There's a way to fix this, but anyway. Um, so that, as you can see, is the right ascension, which we need to fix, by the way. This should be really easy. This is the declination. <laughs> that looks wild. Um, this is the declination of Mercury for the plus or minus five years from now. Um, and we want to try to interpolate this. Damn. <laughs> um, I mean, just damn. Uh, now, there's one thing we can do to the right ascensions um, to make things easier. And instead of looking at the um, at the right ascensions, we can look at their differences, and that's going to be except for when it jumps from like six to zero or something this should actually be fairly um, this should be fairly like a little bit of a sine, almost a zero but a little bit of a sine wave um, assuming of course that uh, bothers to come up um, okay Pomodoro time back in two and two
And we are almost back. We're back. I do not know the legendary Right and Sea song. I, is it a parody of, of um, Let It Be or something? So let me... So with the exception of when it jumps from 0 to 2 pi, uh, you can see these are kind of a nice little sinusoidal wave there. And that sounds kind of nice. So now I want to see if we can do um, Fourier analysis. Not a Fourier transform, yeah, fast Fourier transform. Uh, let's see. Um, so those just convert inverse. Okay, FFT. Wow, Th they're more restrictive than Mathematica is. Is it true that PHP pays more bills than replace with Perl? Um, I mean, if you Google most popular programming languages, and I can do it right here, yeah, Perl is pretty low on the list. Uh, the only the only time you could get sort of a, a good job with Perl is if someone's written a system in Perl and they desperately need a Perl programmer, and Perl programmers are getting rarer and rarer, but certainly not a new language to learn. Um, so, yeah. PHP, well, let's actually take a quick look here. Um, most saleable, most in-demand programming. Yeah, there we go. This is 2019. Um, but I mean, you know, these will change all the time, but this could be a pretty approximately good thing. Okay, I didn't want to continue as Margaret Fontaine. Um... Python, of course, everyone loves Python. Don't know why. Oh. Yeah, JavaScript is the, the really big one because um, because it's, you know, anyone who has a website, anyone who has a web browser can run it. Java also tends to run in a lot of good places. So this is what it looks like um, just based on, I guess, what, what analysis they're doing. But Python always comes up pretty good on the list. JavaScript and Java do as well. Uh, PHP and Perl, you'll see, is not actually even on this list anymore. Um, I wonder if Perl's mentioned anywhere in here. It's not. Um, so let's ask, is Perl saleable? And it's not. It's not anymore. Um... 2014, it wasn't that great. Um, let's see, Pearl Saleable 2020. Well, according to this, oh, these are the, um, uh, this is one guy's opinion who says it's worth learning. Um, top 10 dying programming languages. Um, Yeah. Five programming languages you won't use by 2030. Me, personally, I don't think I'll be using any programming languages in 2030 because I will not be alive. Um, so. I'm guessing Fortran's going to be on that list, too, even though nobody already uses it. Oh, here we are. Um, yes, 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 yes. Objective C, Ruby, Y. 
or CoffeeScript just because it's really JavaScript. Um, but anyway, mm, 10 more years from now, God willing, I'll make it through the end of this year. And God willing, anyone's going to make it through the end of this year. Um, yeah, I don't see myself reaching 75. Um, to be honest, I don't see myself reaching the age I'm at now, but, um, um, yeah. I, if I'm here in 10 years from now, I don't care, because I'm not going to be working, but, um, I just don't see that happening. Okay. Oh, yeah, what are we trying to do? Fourier analysis, um... It's not for most people, but I'm actually not in great shape. I have high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, um, high cholesterol. Everything that's supposed to be low is high, and everything that's supposed to be high is low. So, um, yeah. That's pretty much the way it goes. So anyway, getting back to Fourier analysis in Maxima. Um... Okay, I don't necessarily want to reduce my data to a power of two. I mean, it could. Um, oh. Real FFT? No, it, it's not. It's not. It's not the best shape. It's, it's obviously not the worst shape, because there are people who are still alive and sicker than me but it, there's a, there's a, you know, let me see what the, um, once again, I probably should have, um, the top 25, okay, that's not what I meant to do, anyway. Um, inverse complex, forward complex, fast Fourier transform. Um, that's, that's not, they're older than I am, barely, but they are. Um, I hope they're in good shape. I hope they're in better shape than I am. So now one thing we could do with this, uh, the, the declinations, uh, man, this is, looks really ugly because even the, the peaks are in kind of a sine wave here. Um, and the, I guess the valleys are too, kind of. Um, I mean, the hope was to find the period between these and then use some sort of sine function. This is just fucking ugly. Um, we have an envelope function here. Um, I guess the question is, can we actually have like, how good of a job could we do approximating this curve? Um, using, I guess we could use linear fit to do this. Um, not the whole thing. I've, well, actually, let's see what, let's see what happens. Uh, let's do linear fitting. Um, ooh. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I would imagine they're slowing down a bit. Yeah, sounds like they're in great shape. It sounds like they're not only uh, earning money, Sounds like they're in pretty good physical shape. I'm guessing they don't have um, uh, bursitis. I've got a ton of stuff. I don't even want to, you know, necessarily go through it all. But it sounds like they're going to live nice, healthy, long lifestyles. Uh, which is great. I'm, I'm happy for them. Um, let's see. I'm 
trying to find where in here. I did regression. Um, let's see, multivariate regression. Oh, here we go. Um, no, that's not what I want. I regression the F of the game. So linear regression, this is the thing we looked at earlier. What I want to know is linear Okay, let's a little bit here. What we're looking for is polynomial regression. Um, there we go. Oh yeah, this is what I was looking for, L squares estimates. Yeah. Um, so let's take a look at this. I think this is what I ended up using. Yeah, there we go. So what we want here um so let's go ahead and call this transpose f name three and let's not um print it out um oh no trans trans sorry Matt f name I probably should have actually closed um in fact, let me do that. Should not be leaving files open longer than you need them. There we go. Okay. And by the way, even though I'm calling it declination, it's the ecliptic latitude. Um, but okay. So now the question is... Uh, how linear, what do I call it, least squ L squares estimates. Um, and I think, I think it requires an array of two variables. You can't just give it a, um, D, D to D must be a matrix. Okay, so yeah, this, this does have to be a matrix, and there's a real easy way to turn something into a matrix. Um... Okay, so what we need to do is we need to add an index because we want, um, okay. Okay, uh, so this actually uses X and Y as the um, transpose matrix. Okay. So do I have an add index to yeah, some good shit here. Index. So this should give us a nice little, um, this should not be difficult. This should give us a, uh, the same list as before, but it'll have indexes in front of it, which will be useful. go. Um, and now, question, is this a matrix? No. But that we can fix by doing, let's see, something really stupid like, oh, can we just make this a matrix? Can we just, <laughs> if I put the word matrix in front of it, is it now a matrix? Um... Yeah, so we need the transpose of that. And this should be a nice two column matrix with lo lots of rows, but just two columns. Ah, uh, I see. I've heard of the dining philosopher's problem. So I think this is where I see where this is going. Wait for him with the signal. Um, 
I get the feeling I'm going to see something about um, child dies or something, the child dies signal. But keep going, keep going. Uh, I'm, trying to I'm trying to estimate your joke. Um, let's see. So, da -da 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 -da. I think you can actually do the matrix. You can do the transpose, you can do the matrix after the transpose, but let's go ahead and not do that. Okay, yeah, I've, 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 I'm familiar with the kind of signals you said, which are, um, there's like, you can actually list them, I mean, because I'm really bored. These are the signals you can send, hang up, interrupt, quit, trap, meaning you run a memory, um, bunch of, ch, this is the one that is your child has died, um, Stop the process, con restart the process. Um, I think there's a nice one in here somewhere, but I'm not sure about that. Pull. Anyway, tons and tons of signals you can send your processes. Have fun with them all. So now let's see if this is a um, good. And let's see if this is... I think this is exactly what I needed to be now. I think I can now send this to least squares, estimates, dex, um, um, x is going to be the first one, y, and for right now we can just say, um, this is going to be a terrible estimate, but let's go ahead and do this. Uh, this is going to be a linear estimate, which is going to be just horrible. Whoa. Hmm. Did I want to do a flatten one on that? I sure hope to hell I had flatten one defined. Okay. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Okay. <sighs> Kill minus L. Very good. Yes, you got it. Uh, actually, you might have been telling me that, and I might have typed it in, um, pretending that I already knew it or something. I mean, I knew it already, but I didn't see you put it in there. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and skip Pomodoro this time because we have a guest in the chat. Um, let's see. You know what? Actually, I think. Yes, I think what I just did here can't... Oh, God. So transpose mat 3, I'm pretty sure... Let's actually do this one step at a time now. I'm pretty sure this is a list. This is a regular list here. Let's double check to make sure the length of it should be. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. Now, if I add an index to it, and then put a matrix in front of that. All right, well, let's do that. See what that does. This should now be. Oh fuck! I didn't mean to put a semicolon there. That's going to take a while. Try 
try that again. And yes, I could use a smaller example for testing. I'm just not going to do that. Kind of get the feeling this is not what I wanted to do. Um, so this result here should still have the same length, but I might have buried it too deep. That's good. Okay, that looks good. I don't know if this is going to work. Nope, it's not. It's actually not as long as it looks. So, so let's ask if dex1 is a matrix. And I'm thinking that it's not, because I haven't canonized it. But now, if I put a matrix in front of it, I think this is what I want. Ugh. No, because I don't want it to have this many columns. Um, yeah, this is not quite what I want. Um, so we'll just go ahead and call something an index. Um, which is going to be just what add index does, but in a better way. Make list I where i goes from 1 to the length of dex1. And this one we probably can print out. It's just literally going to be... Um, the numbers 1 through the length. Okay, so now what we actually want to do here is... Um, I think we need to do them like... Yeah. Um, index and then dex zero uh, and I guess we need a transpose in front of that so I think this is going to do what we want okay yes this is what we want every row is now just uh, two columns and so now I'm going to go ahead and BC get this before I forget. Okay. And now. Whoa, yo mama. Okay. So this will give me a best linear approximation to the um, function, which is going to be terrible, so I'm not even going to. isn't anywhere near close. Dun, da, da, da. So it's a big, it's a big, uh, it's a big list. It's a really big list. Although, if this is going to do this, it's going to be a real pain in the ass to get um, to get it to work for when I put an x squared there. So we'll give this another few seconds here before we... We're really not going to try to put the whole 10 years worth of data uh, into a single polynomial. That's just not going to work. Um, Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, software isn't as math heavy as math itself, but it does require a lot of math skills, I would say. Just basically the kind of thinking that math involves, and this is not going to work. So... Okay, that's 
that's not what I wanted to do. Um, and let's see if we can find um, we might be able to approximate the that part which is the first 10,000 hours which is about a year that one we might be able to nail it. not linear but um, now that one should be able to handle So either I've done this wrong, or this thing is being really, really, really slow. This should really work. Yeah, which is not great because, I mean, there are times when brute force is the way to go, um, but there are also times when elegant coding is is nice and faster and more efficient and stuff. Um, but you know, hey, if it works out for you, if you, I think you're going to pass this test, so you're, you'll be good to go. Okay, why is this not working? Okay, so it did work there. Oh, hang on one second. Now these are decimal numbers. Huh. I'm not crazy about the speed at which, which this is going. Uh, this, should, this should run pretty quickly. Let me see if I can speed it. Uh, this might come in really quick. Okay, no. It's going to do it again. Um, this, this should not be trying to do exact fractions, which maybe is slowing it down. I'm going to try putting an N in front of this and see if that... Um, speeds it up any. Wow, it does not seem to. Is it just taking longer now? What the freaking hell? Yep, same answer. Didn't go any faster. Um, well, we can do an N on the whole thing. That doesn't help us, though. That's that's the issue. The efficiency there is both in terms of being able to write code faster and writing code that is faster, uh, both of which are good. But there are times you do need to do brute force, and sometimes, um, you know, I'll spend hours trying to find a shortcut um, to something that doesn't really need um, a shortcut. That it would have been quicker just to do it the hard way. So there's definitely that as well. Um, this should actually be bx plus a c times x squared. Okay. Yeah. This is not cool. So I need to do, um, it's basically it's curve fitting is what we're talking about here. Interpolation, which we did look at earlier, um, but didn't really find anything useful.
interesting. So I seriously doubt we can get a Lagrange on this um, and even this is going to be very ugly. Yeah. And this is just going to use characteristic functions all over the place. I'm going to need a little bit more work here, basically. What we want to do is select every, like, nth element, which we can do. Um, draw the character, draw the, get the splining for that, and then compare it to see how well the spline matches the intermediate points um, that, uh, the intermediate points that we didn't compute the spline for. Um, and the other problem is, well, let's see, hang on. Characteristic function, linear interpolation, which is not bad, but it's not the ideal. C spline, which is probably the closest thing we're gonna get to a good fit. But can we do C spline at a higher interval uh, with like in sort of cubic spline? Can we do um, better than cubic spline? Rational interpolation. All right, let's try that. Okay, oh, interpol every time. Okay. of curious what that looks like. Oh no, hang on. I think it's plot 2D. Damn it. One more time. Give it well. Okay, let's give it a um, first thousand. First hundred. This is going to require some some work to figure this out, and I'm I'm not actually convinced this is the best way to do things. Um. Holy crap. Really? That's the best you can come up with? Jeez. Um. I'm kind of surprised I can't do... I guess Lagrange is technically higher level, um, interpolate. So what does Lagrange give me? Rational interpolation, um, cubic splines. I want quartic splines. Linear interpolation. Okay, which we, which might actually be our savior. Um, characteristic function, Lagrange polynomial. I kind of get the feeling the Lagrange polynomial is going to be just jump around all over the place. But what the hell, let's plot it. Take forever to compute. 
obviously. Yeah, that's not even close to what the function looks like. And Kai. So now, now if you're wondering, could I do a, um, could I do like a, uh, a best linear fit or whatever kind of fit I want, um, using, um, actually maybe I could do that because I don't necessarily need them to be continuous. Hmm. Okay. So let's do that. So here we're trying to get it for the whole um, thing, which is excessive. But what if we just wanted it the linear for the first hundred, uh, let's call it first thousand elements. And that should be pretty quick. Okay. Um, okay. So first things first, it's going to be take dex 0, 1000. This is what the actual... Okay, that is pretty linear. Um, and I guess then I could plot this sucker. Um, but I need to functionalize it. Uh, Alright, hang on. This is not how we're going to do it in general. This is going to be way too fucking ugly. But for right now, until I get this figured out, and then we could say um, x goes from, what was it, 1 to 1,000? Or plot 2D is what I meant, of course. And so now we can look at this, compare it to... error time again, I'm going to skip it again because we have guests in chat. Or just because I don't want to. Uh, let's see, I think I have two GNU plots running. Oh, no, I don't. Okay. I mean, that looked like a pretty good fit, but I think the problem is... Um, this plot's going to actually override this. Yeah. Um, so I basically need to print the residuals. I need to print... Um, yeah. So what I need to do here is I need to make a list of this... Well, that actually should do it. Oh. Okay. Now, can I, can I? No, I think I better do this the correct way. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, so this is the difference now between the two. It's not bad. I mean, there's a, there's a little bit of a um, obviously there's it's not a perfect match, but it's within uh, 0 0.008 degrees, I guess, um, uh, which is well. Let's see what it is. Eight over a thousand times sixty. That should be. That's actually not bad. That's um. 28 seconds of arc. So now, the question comes, can I, um, what if we were to go all the way to, um, uh, to a, uh, a square plot? Okay. Um, So I guess we're going to go back to make list. There we go. We're not even going to bother to... Um, uh, what is it? A is this. 
times x. And yes, I do have my um, parameters kind of fucked up right now because I have a as being the one term, b as being the zero term, and c as being the two term, so it's not consistent. But um, obviously we need to clean this up a lot. Okay, and now we're down to eight ten thousandths uh, of a of a of a degree. Notice that we're actually one decimal point lower. Um, so this is not bad actually for the um, you know for doing a an interpolation for a thousand points uh, in 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 a third degree uh, in the third in the third degree. Um, so now what we need. Let's see what we do need. Um, and we could also just have done the C spline, by the way, of um, of every thousand points or something, um, and then compared it to the uh, to the original. Okay. And that would be something like that would be like um, let's see. Okay, so it's this, and so every thousand points. Um, well, let's see what C spline returns. Oh, I know what it returns. Never mind. Um, So if this works the way I think it does, every n I think is what I want, that should not be that long. That should have been, nope, didn't even like the function every n. Uh, every nth, maybe? Let's find out what it is. Each nth, every n, okay. <sighs> One of these days. Um, Let's see if the word every is even in here. Every iteration. Ooh. Yes. I think we can do it with make list. So what we want here, for example, would be we'll call it Matt. We'll call it Matt 1000. This is a not terrible name for it. Let's actually call it Dex 1000. Also a terrible name for it. Uh, make list um, Dex zero i times 1000 plus one because the first element is one, not zero. Uh, I goes from one to length Dex zero over a thousand and I. Th don't know if I need to put a floor on that because uh, this is technically not a um, this is not a uh, an integer. Okay, that worked. So now what I could do is I could c-spline this thing. Um, gotta be careful here. So I, I could c-spline this thing. That's not that's not the problem. Um, and then, let's see, yeah, okay, I can do that, I can see spline this. I could even plot the frickin' C spline uh, as x goes from 1 to, I think it's 87 here. Damn! That looks really good, actually. <laughs> um, okay, now the only problem here is uh, this has 87 elements, and the original list had... Um, 87,000. So we do need to do our 1,000 sort of transform here. Um, and I think... Um, I think we 
can do it like this. f of x is equal to c spline of dex 1000. Uh, can I call the variable here? I'm almost sure it's not going to let me get away with this. Um, I don't think I can do this. That's weird. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, let's let's do this. Whoa. Just worked. What the hell? Oh, I guess I didn't actually ever declare I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. And then C spine. Okay, what the hell did I just do? Oh, shit. Yes. Must never use the equal sign. It is verb- well, you can use it sometimes, but most of the time, no. Alright. So if f of x is equal to dec- Really? Why can't I do that? Hmm. Oh shit, do I need to do set equal to because this is a function? Well, of course I do. Really? Hang on. This is not promising. Oh, I guess that does work. Um, So what we kind of really want is this. But that didn't seem to do that well. So if f of 85 is... I don't know if that's going to work, though. Fucking hell! Is it evaluate? Alright, let's just plot x from 1 to 3. Nice, very linear. Plot f of x over 1000. From x goes from 1000 to 4000, it's not going to do what we want. Okay. So it's not quite where we need to be. I think we can fix that with an evaluate. Um, so the idea is to draw the spline um, as broadly as possible, and then check on the, make sure the interval intermediate results uh, still are close enough. And that should be quite doable. Okay, I've now been streaming Holy crap! For two and a half hours now, and it was two hours earlier today, so I am, I'm freaking crazy man. Uh, four and a half hours of streaming today, which is more than enough for anybody. Um, Alright, get some sleep, have some fun, thank you. I'm gonna get some, I don't, it's not too early to sleep, but uh, thank you for watching everyone, and good night for now.